We had spent enough time in this accursed wizard's tower to know that not everything here was as it seemed. But the only thing standing between us and the treasure we came here to get was a little house cat. What could it possibly do to stop us? Welcome to Monster of the Week, the show where I research old monsters from editions past and revive them for 5th edition Dungeons and Dragons. Today's monster was suggested by user Jesta Killa, and I am of course talking about the Guardian Familiar. The Guardian Familiar can be found only in the original Fiend Folio. Usually when a monster doesn't get reprinted in any other editions, it's either because the monster didn't turn out to be that great, or it just doesn't fall in line with the design philosophies of what the game designers are looking for in the newer editions. In this case, I think it's the latter, because the Guardian Familiar is actually really interesting, although it is a little bit complicated. The Guardian Familiar is, in fact, often a familiar to a powerful spellcaster. It serves, as its name would further suggest, to be a guardian of any treasure that is precious to its master. It will simply take a seat atop whatever treasure it's been instructed to guard, and there it will remain until its master tells it to do otherwise. It won't attack anyone or really do anything else unless it is of course attacked first, or someone tries to take the treasure that it's guarding. Now I'm sure most of you are familiar with the saying, cats have nine lives, and that saying is actually what drove the core design philosophy behind the guardian familiar. See, it starts out as just a normal house cat, albeit maybe a little bit larger or somewhat more magical, but ultimately all it can really do is claw and use a bite attack. It's not really that threatening. However, if it is killed, it revives instantly, a little bit stronger and a little bit bigger. It continues this cycle up to nine times, getting bigger and stronger every single time, until eventually it's about the size of a saber-toothed tiger and is capable of terrible damage. Now, the reason I say it's a little bit complicated is because with each death, you have to recalculate its hit points, its armor class, and its damage modifier. Fortunately, doing this in 5th edition is a little bit easier, and in the conversion document, I've actually included a table that will tell you what its stats are going to be at each level of reincarnation. Mechanically, what we're actually doing here is increasing the creature's hit dice by 1, its dexterity by 2, and gradually increasing its size category. Without a quick reference table like this, I can see from a design perspective where this would be really clunky and just not fun to use in the middle of a game. But having everything ready to go ahead of time saves so much effort, and it really makes this ability pretty awesome. There are almost no other creatures to my knowledge in 5th edition that have a power like this, so it should catch your players off guard. Now while the 9 lives trait is hands down the unique gimmick of this creature, it does also have magical resistance, but not just the magical resistance some creatures in 5th edition have, it still gets advantage on saving throws against magical effects, but also it's resistant to any type of magic damage. This means that any damage caused by a magical source is going to be cut in half immediately. This can be a good way to show your players, even before the first rebirth, that this cat might not be just what it seems to be on the surface. When it comes to actually dealing damage, the Guardian Familiar of course has its claw and bite attacks. And these attacks only get stronger as the creature gets larger. This already has the makings of a pretty unique encounter, but unfortunately that's all there is to it as far as the book is concerned. At this point the Guardian Familiar is going to function just like any other average beast, except it keeps coming back of course. If you're okay with that, then that's fine, but I do think that just with a couple minor changes we can make this creature a lot more interesting for your players. The first thing I would do is give the creature an ability similar to that of the Blink Dog. This won't affect combat too much, but if the Guardian Familiar is able to keep moving around and teleporting these short distances, it will at least help keep combat unpredictable. Plus, it prevents one of the players from just simply grappling the creature while the other players go and loot whatever treasure it was guarding. The other thing you could consider here is giving it a breath weapon once it reaches a certain point on its 9 life cycle, maybe after 5 or 6 deaths. And I don't mean something as simple as an acid or fire breath weapon to just cause more damage, although you could do that. I was more thinking something like a cloud of paralysis, or even sleep if you want to ramp things up another level. Keep in mind, of course, by doing this, you'll be making the encounter much more difficult, but if you think your players are up to the task, it can be a great way to just give them something else they have to deal with in combat. When it comes to actually using the Guardian Familiar in your game, the most obvious choice, of course, is to have it just sitting on top of an alluring treasure chest in a dungeon. The players will almost immediately suspect something is up with this, but just emphasize that the cat does nothing except stare them down. That is, of course, until they try to open the treasure chest. I think the keys to making this encounter fun and avoiding a combat slog are these two things. 
First off, when the cat revives, make it happen immediately. Don't make the players wait a full round for it to revive at the beginning of its turn, even though that's how a lot of these abilities are described in 5th edition, because by doing that, you're making them wait just an entire round for it to revive. The reincarnation effect should happen as soon as the creature drops to zero hit points. The reason I say this is because if it goes through 9 iterations of itself and they have to wait a full round every single time, that's going to be at least 9 rounds of combat and as I'm sure many of you know, that's a long time. The second thing is, I wouldn't make them fight just the guardian familiar in most situations. While the cat is going to be the focus of this encounter, throw in a couple other lower level enemies to kind of mix up the fight a little bit. Maybe there are some suits of magical armor on either side of the room that spring to life when combat begins. Or perhaps the rug they're standing on becomes animate and starts trying to smother one of the characters. Or maybe there's some goblins that have been dominated by the wizard who owns this dungeon and they rush in to help when the alarm is sounded by the battle with this cat. Personally, I find this is a great place to throw some animated objects at the players, especially if this encounter is taking place in a wizard's lair. And if you really want to be a jerk, then maybe the treasure chest that the house cat was sitting on is actually a mimic. Another possibility you have here is that the guardian familiar is actually guarding a person and not an object. This could simply be an important NPC that the players are going to rescue, and maybe when they get to the holding cell, instead of finding armed guards, they see that the place is just being watched by a suspicious house cat. Or maybe the Guardian Familiar is in fact guarding its master. If the players start combat against a bad guy, thinking that easily in a group they can take him on maybe 4 or 5 on 1, they might be in for a surprise when his little cat familiar turns out to be a monster in disguise. One interesting thing that the sourcebook mentions is that the Guardian Familiar won't actively chase down anyone who decides to leave combat. Its only concern is really guarding the treasure that it was left with, so if the party gives up and decides to go, the Guardian Familiar is not going to hunt them down. That is, of course, unless they took some of the treasure with them on their way out. This is important to know because it is very possible the party might just decide to leave. From their perspective, when they keep killing this thing, it just comes back stronger, and stronger, and stronger, so eventually, they're not going to be able to kill it. This of course might not be true depending on the party's level, but there's no reason they should assume that it only has 9 lives. Given that pretty much everyone knows the phrase, cats have nine lives, it's very likely they may come to that conclusion on their own, but as a DM, you can't really bank on that. If you do want to give the players a way to figure out what's going on, you could describe the cat as maybe having nine stripes across its back, and with each incarnation, one of the stripes fades away. This is a classic example of telling without really telling, and you're letting the players kind of draw their own conclusions, which ultimately they like to do. That's part of the reason why they play the game. Overall, I think the Guardian Familiar can always add a little something extra to your Funhouse Dungeon or Wizard's Tower, and I definitely think they're worth giving a shot. Hopefully you found this video helpful, and hopefully you enjoyed hearing me talk about this formidable feline. If you did, please subscribe to the channel, I have at least one new video every week, and I'd love to hear from you if you've got more suggestions for future monsters, or just ways that this monster's been used on you or you've used it in the past, let me know about it in the comments below. As always, thank you so much for watching, I really appreciate it, and I will see you next week.